Hey guys, this is David from Benchmark. Today's video, we're talking about tips and tricks on how to make sure you have the absolute most bulletproof localization that you can have for your job. So last time we talked a little bit what localizations are, when you need them, why you wanna use them, that sort of thing. Today, we're making a video more for guys who've done them before and maybe they're finding that they did one and their data didn't quite line up with what they wanted. Maybe it didn't line up day to day. Maybe it didn't line up with the known data they had for the site. It's gonna be sort of the most common questions and problems that we get with localization when we're talking to the guys on the, on the support line and what you can do to avoid those problems. If you didn't watch the last video, you want a localization because it's gonna help you tie your GPS data into some other data set, whether that's the real world, whether that's your data from the previous time you were on site, anything like that, that's when you're gonna wanna do a localization. When your localization goes wrong, when maybe you have some bad data in there, maybe you have the wrong coordinate or uh, just a bad shot in there somehow, it transforms your GPS data and it doesn't line up with any Anything. Now maybe it's just shifted a little bit off, maybe it's rotated, but it can be skewed all the way so your data is telling you you're in the middle of the Pacific when you're just here in Calgary. So what are the most common mistakes we hear of here at Benchmark when it comes to localization? Well easily the number one and easiest to spot but also most frustrating in the field problem when we come to localizations is guys bringing in northing easting elevation data as easting northing elevation data sometimes it's on the whole data set it will inverse the whole job sometimes it's just on one or two points and it stretches the whole job out so it shows you in the middle of the hawaiian islands and you don't know why the easiest way around this is just to double check all the control points that you have in there make sure that your northings in your northing make sure that your eastings in your easting and make sure your elevations bang on and then you'll know all your coordinates are good and that your localization should be good on the known point side of things. So here's what that looks like. On my screen here I have a couple points, points three and four. And on point three I put it at northing 10,000, easting 100 and on point four I flipped those. So northing 100, easting 10,000 and you can see that on one of them I'm close to downtown and on the other one I'm not even in the city. So problem number two is when guys do a lot of work outside of their localization. A lot of the times we get calls and we'll say, okay, have you localized to the job? And guys will say, yep, of course, I got three localization points. I got three known points. I tagged them all. I tagged a fourth checkpoint. I'm good to go. The next question is where are those control points? And a lot of the time they'll be two, three kilometers away from the job site. The guys aren't working anywhere close to their known control. And like we showed in the last video, when you have just a small little area of control and then you're working way over here. You have so much room for skew, for rotation, for even just the smallest rotation errors to have such a huge compound effect on your results that you're not going to see repeatability day to day. Now, I get that sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you have a job where there's just no control at all to be found, but you still have to tie it in. In cases like that, it's, it's always worth putting down. If you're there for a few hours anyways, it's always worth starting static on your base, putting down a control point on the job, maybe two, running them through Opus, running them through NR Arcans PPP, getting a point on the ground that you can then tie into. So if you have a ton of control points on site, then it's all about choosing the best ones to make sure you have the best localization. Now, that is gonna be one, you want ones around the edge so your job is inside of that localization. But two, if you can, you wanna choose points that are more in the open. They don't have as many hazards. They, you give everything the best chance of having a good, accurate, and tight solution because any error in that localization is gonna affect the whole job. Now that includes things like buildings, that includes things like trees, whether or not they have leaves on them, and it also includes, and this is the big one that we get calls about a lot, it includes power lines because as soon as you put a receiver under a power line, you can sort of imagine it as just a big steel pipe that's like three feet in diameter. The receiver can't see through it. So keep those things away from power lines if you can, keep them away from trees if you can, keep them away from buildings if you can. That's gonna give you the best chance of having the tightest shots in your localization. So next up, what you're gonna wanna do when you're shooting control points is you're gonna wanna plumb up your pole, you're gonna wanna put a bipod on it, and you're not gonna wanna use the tilt sensor. Now why do I ask that? The tilt sensor makes you way faster when you're doing topos, way faster when you're doing stakeouts. So David, why do I turn it off when I'm doing a localization? The answer is, whenever you're using the tilt sensor, you're adding two centimeters, about an inch of uncertainty to the bottom of every shot that you take. So when you're doing that on a known point, and you're plumbing up anyways, 
you're looking at that bubble you got on the pole, you're making sure it's dead level before you take that shot, all you're doing is adding a little bit of uncertainty at the bottom of that shot that's gonna affect your whole localization. Now, why do you wanna use a bipod? The answer is simple. I don't care how experienced you are. I don't care how long you've been in the field. You put a bipod on a survey pole and you level it up. That thing is going to stay more level than you just holding the pole in your hand. Even if you've been doing this for 30 years, I get that you can walk down the street and the bubble probably doesn't move. But over the time taking, if you're taking a long duration, 30 second, 60 second, maybe longer than that localization shot, a bipod's going to move less. I promise you that. The last thing that you can do to make sure that you have a bulletproof localization in the field is you can set your tolerances in Field Genius to make sure that it doesn't accept anything that's looser than what you want. Now I'm showing you that right here. I'm just going to change some tolerances on, on my screen here in Field Genius. When you're setting it up, setting up the rover, you can go into your active tolerances and you can change the tolerance settings. So I'm gonna go into this RTK Fix Topo setting that I have here. I'm gonna change it from uh, RTK fixed topo to RTK fixed control. Okay, I'm gonna change the observations I need to take to 30 here instead of three. I'm still gonna make sure I have a fix and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna make sure I'm even tighter than five centimeters. Let's say two centimeters horizontal, two centimeters vertical, sure. Now, is it's now gonna monitor the solution for me? And if the solution ever drifts up over that two centimeter uh, threshold that I just set, it's not gonna include those shots in the measurement. So it's making sure that I have the tightest possible shot for my localization. So just to recap, next time you go to a localization, step one, make sure all your coordinates are in the same format and you're importing that properly. Whether that's northing easting elevation or easting northing elevation, make sure that they all line up and you're not switching between them and you know what you're importing there. Second, turn your tilt sensor off, use a bipod, get right level on that control point and don't move the receiver. Number three, try to choose the best possible locations for your control points, open sky, I'm talking no trees, no power lines, no buildings, nothing like that. Fourth, try to make sure your localization points are surrounding your job so that you're always working within that control that you've set. You're not going you know, out to Timbuktu here when your controls all local stuff that you have. And fifth, you're gonna wanna set up your control tolerance to give you values that you're comfortable with on that control, something a little tighter than probably your topo shots that you're taking. And uh, that's gonna make sure the next time you're in the field, you have bulletproof localizations. If you got any questions about this video, give me a call at the number on screen. Always happy to help. And if not, I'll see you in the next video.